Ladies and gentlemen, jumping into the anime isekai recap of freaking Uncle Guy. My favorite part about this is how he didn't have sex. Isn't that relatable, guys? <laughs> Uncle Isekai is glorious. It's glorious! It takes every possible isekai trope and throws it on its head. All right, baby, let's jump right into it. Imagine visiting your uncle, who has just woken up from a coma after 17 years. Yeah, that would be, that would be sick. Only to find him speaking gibberish. Dude, I freaking love his uncle in this, because he, he wasn't a, a pedophile. Meet Takafumi and his uncle Yosuke. Yosuke claims to have been in an alternate Bro, man, looks like the smiling titan! Holy moly! Called Grand Bamel for the last 17 years. Takafumi stares in disbelief, believing his uncle must be suffering from mental damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sensing his disbelief, his uncle tries to prove to him he went to another world by using magic. He chants in a strange language, but nothing mm -hmm. happens, much to Takafumi's dismay. No way! Takafumi tries to tell him about his financial struggles and inability to support him, when he just like me for real. Suddenly his uncle triggers a wind spell while using Japanese and Takafumi real- <laughs> Realizes his uncle was telling the truth. Bro, that is the craziest realization ever. This story is about this guy who was in a coma for 17 years. His nephew visits him. He gets up and he starts saying, And he's like, what the frick are you doing? And he's like, I'm casting spells. I was in an alternate universe for the last 17 years. And the nephew's like, all right, sure, sure, sure. Okay, all right, you know what? All right, sure, okay, fine. All right, can't, fine, whatever, sure, okay. <laughs> and then he actually does it because this man actually wasn't an isekai. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing the first ever post-isekai story. The guy who's back. And it's crazy. It's wild. Yosuke is a nerd and asks Takafumi about the console war situation and how Sega is doing. He becomes distraught. <laughs> how is Sega doing? Oh, Sega's shit now. Oh, the Sonic franchise is bad. Oh, Chris Chad. Brought when he learns that Sega no longer makes consoles. He immediately no! writes in his notebook and chants a spell, Akira's Korra. Takafumi asks what Akira's Korra is, and his uncle reveals to him that it's the memory erasure spell. Which <laughs> Every time he gets bad news, he just erases his memory. Bro, if only I could get rid of my incredibly massive dump truck of mental trauma that sits on my shoulders every day. That would be crazy. This is whenever he experiences something on- Every time I open Twitter, it just hits me again. Like, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, is Twitter canceling me? However, he writes it down in his notebook before erasing it. Takafumi asks to read the notebook, which he immediately regrets. <laughs> it's a notebook. <laughs> Every time something traumatic happens, he writes it down in his notebook and he erases his memory. <laughs> so this is a notebook just completely full of trauma. This is just a whole notebook of the worst possible things that could have happened to somebody. Oh my god. Causing him to break down in tears and ask- <laughs> These are all the things that were too bad for him to keep in his head. So he writes them down, he obliviates himself, and then- <laughs> Dude, that is such a funny idea. It's like, I just carry around a notebook of all the things that should be traumatizing me right now. Ask his uncle to use Akira's Quora on him. A week so then he gets his uncle to erase his memory for reading his book. Dude, I freaking love this anime so much. So much. But where can it go from here? Like, whenever I have hear an anime with, like, a really wild concept, the first thing that pops into my head is, how are they going to one-up this? How are they actually going to one-up this concept? Later, Yosuke gets discharged and moves in with Takafumi. Let's go. Meanwhile, Takafumi decided to monetize his uncle's powers what and start a legend. <laughs> started, a started posting videos of it on YouTube. Bro, bro literally made a YouTube channel to flex his uncle's superpowers. Which helped to generate some ad revenue. Later, Yosuke asks Takafumi. Not, nah, couldn't be me, for real. Guys, can you please... Subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> I uploaded an hour-long video yesterday and it's age-restricted. I literally want to cry. Why he has such a big apartment living alone, to which he replies that he was initially a room share setup, but it didn't work out. His yeah. uncle is surprised to hear the term room share, which he has never heard of, but is happy to hear Takafumi found friends to live with. Oh, hell Takafumi yeah. asks his uncle about his companions in the other world, Bruh. to which he informs him he was mostly solo for 17 years. Bro, bro is the worst, the worst kind of isekai protagonist. 
The reason was that everyone in the other world was beautiful, while he was seen as a monster and got hunted down wherever he went. Oh my god, I love that so much! Because you know everyone in Isekai are like beautiful, right? All the characters, like you want to have sex with all of them, male, female. And then you have this dude, just your average bro, your average dingus, just rolls up in some Isekai. And they all think he's a monster because he's hideous. <laughs> oh my god, it's such a great concept, such a good twist on the joke. His uncle talks about one particular person who followed him around regularly and Oh my god, him. I know this. He saved her life, but rather than saying thanks, she was rude to him. As his uncle continues to talk more about Dude, the person- Dude, this is the greatest thing in the world. This is actually the most hilarious concept. Takafumi realizes that the girl actually liked his uncle, but was it Sunderay? It's Sandra! Thank you, AI voice. No, dude, it's the hilarious thing was he found a Tsundere in the other world. And you know how Tsundere's are always like abusive? And the Tsundere is always like, not that I like you or anything, Baka, and then punches him. So he literally thought that she hated him. <laughs> He's like, there was this girl who always said mean things about me and always assaulted me and attacked me. Because <laughs> he doesn't know what a Tsundere is because he's 17 years in the other world. And so he thought she hated him and she was evil and antagonistic, but she was in love with him and just a tundra. Oh my god, it's the greatest twist ever. Concept that didn't exist 17 years ago. His uncle shifts his attention to the comments on his YouTube video, with one commenting on how fake it looked. Real. Real. Every time. Every Do you know that I get comments on my videos asking me if I'm AI? Like, are you AI? I hate these AI YouTubers. You're not even a real person. Bro, no AI could say shit fart come the way I do. And that's a fact. Yosuke struggles using the internet and dealing with haters for the first time. Not haters! One day, Yosuke shows interest in buying a turn model cell phone from an auction. Takafumi says it won't work since it uses a 2G signal. His uncle wants to get it anyway. While he is surprised by the innovation of smartphones, he laments about their lack of gimmick. Yosuke mentions how he once innovated an item in the other world and showed his memory using a spell. He had crafted an everlasting pot of water using spell cards for a village sure, sure, suffering sure, sure, from sure, sure, a drought. Takafumi and he's like, whoa, my uncle's awesome! He is impressed and thinks the villagers must have sung him praises. But in yep. reality, the villagers had tried to hang him because it was sacrilegious, and they smashed it. <laughs> Bro! This man takes L's no matter where he goes. <laughs> real, real. He accidentally made a hate crime, oops. While the villagers were trying to hang him, an elf arrives to stop them. While the elf tried to mediate the situation, Yosuke took the chance to escape. Yosuke is able to change the point of view in his memory, showing how he was treated. Takafumi Bruh. is shocked at how cute the elf is. He's like, a, a woman? Bruh. Suddenly Yosuke gets a notification of the auction on the cell phone closing down soon and orders it in a panic without checking the shipping cost, Oops. which turns out to be 2,000 yen for Oops. the island. Oops, that's $20, that's crazy. One from an isolated island was selling it. Takafumi laments that if the location was closer, they could have picked it up and saved on the shipping cost. But it's a good Yosuke thing the uncle- suddenly jumps out- <laughs> Oh well, too expensive, suicide time, just <laughs> dies. ...of the window, to Takafumi's surprise, and flies away, oh, returning from his trip 30 fly. minutes later with the cell phone in hand. He shows it off to Takafumi, who- I love how bro is out here having such a hard time making money. Meanwhile, he can literally fly and shoot lasers and teleport and all that stuff. Like, I feel like there's such a much better way to monetize that shit. Isn't 2,000 yen like $2? I think it's $20. Who asks him if he could pick up other items to save on shipping costs, which he agrees to. Takafumi receives a package and asks his uncle for something to open the box with. His uncle gives him a short sw- <laughs> Yo, keep has the letter opener. Sure thing. Take my dragon saber. Which surprised- The nephew becomes more of an incel? Bro, he just like me, for real. This is him, and he asks his uncle where it came from. His uncle shows him his story- Oh, I just have a pocket dimension. <laughs> oh, it's like, yeah, whatever. I just use my, you know, my regular my pocket dimension. Magic as he pulls his notebook from it. Bro, it actually looks so sick. Takafumi asks if his uncle had brought more stuff from the other world. 
He takes out some rings, which he says are rare enough to trade for a castle. Talk And bro didn't think of he selling that stuff? Oh my god. Fumi gets excited, but his uncle informs him that he had already tried selling it at the pawn shop and it was priced at 50 yen because the materials were so rare. They thought it was oh, just a toy. Oh man, oh man, that's so sad. Asks whether his uncle wanted to give the ring to someone, to which uncle informs him that it was a trophy for clearing a dungeon. Seeing Takafumi down, Yosuke asks if he wants to talk about love and shares the story of his first love, Sonic and Tails. Yosuke reminisces <laughs> about visiting the toy store and watching the title screen. Takafumi asks if he ever met any girls in the other world, to which his uncle shows him his memory of saving a girl and her siblings from an orc. While initially thankful, the girl eventually dis- They thought he was another orc! ...bears upon seeing his face and decides to sacrifice herself by giving- <laughs> Just take me! Let them go! Man literally too ugly for love. This is so sad. <laughs> Up. She subjects herself. I know my time has come. There is no escaping a vicious beast such as the. Giving herself up to save her siblings. Having. She's like crying. Like, no, please. At least let my siblings go. You can have me if you want. He misinterpreted the situation. Oh Uncle thought that God. the girl was happy and thankful to him, but he suddenly blacks out and thinks that some goblins attacked him from behind and threw him into the river. Takafumi notices in the memory that the girl's siblings were making suspicious moves while trying to get behind his uncle and they Oh my god, he's such a sin! were the ones who attacked him. But thanks to the elf, his uncle was saved. The elf proclaims that he is in her debt, so to repay her, he gives her an extremely rare ring. The elf panics and <laughs> She's like all cindere about it. No, fuck! Blushes as he puts the ring on her finger but ultimately accepts it. Takafumi is shocked and realizes the elf thought he was proposing to her. But in the end Yosuke sold the ring to pay off his perceived- He just took the ring back! No, He just took it back off! ...debt and abandoned the elf in a random town, leading to her following him oh, everywhere man. for 17 years. 17 years! Bro, she's just some crazy stalker shit, man. Bro. Bro! For every W he has three L's, accidentally proposes to Hot Elf, and then gets harassed by her for three years. My god. Yosuke tells Takafumi to put his sword away, which ends up as inspiration for his next viral YouTube video, getting over 2 million views. Damn. A week later, on a rainy day, Yosuke receives a package. It's the final Sega magazine which he never had the chance to read. Takafumi has no interest, but as his uncle reads the magazine, he finds that the most popular game was a dating sim, while his favorite so game Guardian Heroes came in ranked 197th. Oh god. Yosuke hovers outside in the pouring rain. <laughs> Bro, this is such a mood! This is such a mood! Oh my god. Brother. Oh man. And gets struck by lightning, proclaiming that Guardian Heroes should have won. Once really? the rain settles, Takafumi tries to console his uncle, telling him that at least an RPG placed second. He then learns that his uncle didn't play RPGs due to his lousy memory surrounding True. remembering objectives. The mentioning of RPGs jogs Yosuke's memory of a time that reminded him of an RPG encounter he had. He is told about Bro, a dragon I, that threatens- I love that this dude was in like the craziest game world ever. That's the funniest thing in the world. ...to destroy the village and the way to defeat the dragon is with a special ice sword from the Ice Clan. However, the sword is sealed by a girl named Mabel and he must cure her broken heart to get the sword. It's just the most complicated quest in the world. Upon meeting with Mabel, she tells him about a particular flower that her mother once showed oh her. Oh my god, I hate RPG quests that are like this. You must slay the dragon with the legendary sword that is encased in ice that you must get from the woman who needs the flower, who needed to go to the dark forest, who you must unlock through going to- Yosuke immediately leaves and goes straight to the dragon. <laughs> He's like, you know what? Screw this quest. I don't need to get her flowers, I don't need to get her love, just get, I can just beat the dragon myself. Playing it himself without needing the sword. Takafumi notes how he should have retrieved the flowers for Mabel, but his uncle claims it was too hard for him to remember. The village elder is shocked to hear he defeated the dragon without the sword and Mabel is left to her misery. The Bro! Man just leaves all the side characters to die. This man kills every Dark Souls NPC just because he can't be bothered to talk to them. Oh my god. 
Oh, the tragedy. Doorbell rings, and it's a package delivery containing a Sega Saturn and 20 games. He gives it to his uncle as a gift and his oh, uncle is shocked. Yosuke is overjoyed, and the two play games together. Uh, On New Year's Eve, Takafumi becomes curious about what New Year's was like in the other world. His uncle shows him his memory of a New Year's Eve party. Uh, this is the wildest reverse isekai of all time. Party that he attended. Everyone was happy and having a wonderful time except for his uncle who ate alone and returned to his room for the night. He just like me, for real. Damn, this, 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 is, this is dark, this is sad. Takafumi is disappointed at the memory and they go play on the Sega Saturn instead. Yeah! Game session, Video game. Yusuke reveals that Mabel did visit him that night. Wait, and what? Takafumi turns off the game and demands that he see what happened during her visit. Once again, Yosuke shows his memory and Bro, Mabel Bro, even though he didn't get her the flower, he still rizzed her so much. Asks she how she could overcome being a coward. What is going on here? And be strong like him. One Yosuke day. gives One her day. a motivational speech, but it takes a drastic turn when he learns that she's a recluse and suggests it's okay to stay that way and okay to be a coward. Bro. There is no way. <laughs> Mabel offers him the ice sword, but he declines it because it's too cold and the memory ends. Bro, this man is literally unbelievable. This this man is be stuck between being the ultimate Riz god and the anti Riz. This is crazy. He's like, this is like a level of oblivious far beyond anything we've ever experienced as a species. The pair spend the rest of the man has both no hoes and all the hoes at the same time. He friend zones people by accident. Dude, I cannot believe he throws her back into her depressive pit. This is like me when someone in chat's like, hey, Nux, I've been depressed, but watch your videos and it helps. And I'm like, yeah, man, but you should just keep watching my videos. Don't actually go into the outside world. The outside world's dark and dreary and scary. Just sit at home and watch porn all day like, like you've been doing, you know, just, just, just. just like, let's be real here. It's my, uh, you can't get hurt if you're just watching. <laughs> the New Year's Eve, eating noodles and discussing games. The next day, we meet a woman named... Ah! Sorry, woman jump scare. Just, just like, came out of nowhere. I, I was, like, mentally prepared all day that I might see a woman on this stream. And, like, I was preparing myself, but still, just the jump scare, it just got me. Like, I, I, I don't know, I was, like, lulled into a false sense of security and just... just woman happened you know what i'm saying ujimiya she is creeped out when she sees yosuke on a bench yeah it's it, it's I, I get it talking to himself oh as she walks away she runs into takafumi bro why is she blushing like that they haven't seen each other since childhood oh, never mind They're, they were secret besties all along makes sense and they briefly chat takafumi invites her over to visit his place which Fujimiya agrees to, but tells him she'll come over after dropping off her groceries. Oh, 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 he's inviting her to his place? Damn, Takafumi, my man out here got some moves. My man got some riz. God damn, not gonna lie, pretty impressive, Mr. Takafumi. Not bad, not bad. This is a Kite Man reference for all of my Harley Quinn enthusiasts in chat. 30 minutes later, Fujimiya arrives and receives a text from Takafumi about how he's out getting snacks, but will be home soon. No! No, not the uncle! Not an uncle NTR scene, please! Please! Please, please, I'm begging you, I can't. My, my, my balls can't take it. My balls cannot take it. Fujimiya enters the place, and shortly after, He flies in! No! Yosuke arrives, no, landing Yosuke. on the balcony. Bro, Yosuke no, notices her stop. and charges at her, pinning her down and attempts to erase her memory of what she saw. Oh my god, dude. There's no way! This is like the saddest Netorare situation in the universe. There is no world that this is okay. But Takafumi returns just in time and- Let's go! <laughs> Oh my god, dude, can you imagine? Can you imagine? You get invited to some guy's house, you show up, <laughs> you show up, the guy that invited you is not there, the uncle flies in onto the balcony and tackles you, the nephew shows up and beats the crap out of his uncle. <laughs> what the fuck is happening, bro? <laughs> what is going on, magical uncle NTR? Bro, this is wild! Stops him, explaining that she's his friend. Upon hearing this, you why is he holding her head like that? 
Man is four seconds away from just snapping her neck. Yosuke offers his apology and thanks Fujimiya for being Takafumi's friend. Afterward, Damn. Takafumi tries to explain how his uncle can use magic and is a YouTuber. However, Fujimiya <laughs> oh, believes I don't know what's Yosuke weirder. <laughs> what's weirder? Using magic or being a YouTuber? She's like, all right, using magic, whatever, that's better. A YouTuber? That means he's probably a psychosociopath. And she's probably right. It's crazy and is taking advantage of Takafumi's kindness, proclaiming that Yosuke should what? leave Takafumi's life and live his own. Bro, she was here for four seconds. She was here for four seconds and she is butting into their life and telling them how to change their existence. Yosuke deduces right, that she likes okay, Takafumi, man. despite her denying it and Takafumi claiming they're just friends. But that's worse? Wait, what do you mean? Yosuke doesn't buy it. Yosuke dashes behind Fujimiya and What the hell was that? Oh my god! It's her mind. Of course he does. Of course he does. Of, of course he does. Sure. I guess. When, you know what? Honestly, sure. Okay, of course he does. He finds out she changed her outfit and even showered before coming. She showered before coming? Dude, if I showered before coming, I would be the cleanest man on the... Uh, anyway. Causing her to be embarrassed. Bro, why are you doing- this is like invading privacy on another level. It's an average creepy family member, I guess. The doorbell rings and Yosuke goes to answer it. Fujimiya suggests that Takafumi cut ties with his uncle. He Bro, she is a vindictive bitch. Like, yeah, the uncle's a psycho, obviously, but she is like, brother, that is one crazy whammon. Holy moly. I'm just saying, she- you think she's brought in from another universe to invade their- circle and take him down or something because even offering to help him with rent which he mistakes as her wanting to be roommates that was no mistake <laughs> one day as takafumi returns home he finds a confused looking fujimiya with the elf from the other world what the, uh, what nani da takare? what how did that even happen and they were roommates and it just worked it's like, your uncle should move out. That means you want to move in. They then have sex. 75 minutes earlier, Takafumi tells his, <laughs> Look at his that uncle face. that Fujimiya will be coming over. Bruh. He then reads his uncle's email, which his uncle ignored because it was in English and he couldn't read it. Makes sense. Takafumi tells him it's a message from YouTube and warns his uncle he will soon be jobless. YouTube changed oh, the no. requirement to earn money. Dude, this is so real. This is just sucker punching me right in the balls every single time they do this. Oh my god. To having 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. What? Hold up. That's actually true. That is actually a change that they did make. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. His uncle's channel. But there's no way that he doesn't have that. Man got 2 million views on a video. There's no shot he doesn't have that. Has enough watch time, but only 812 subscribers. Ain't no way. Ain't no way! Takafumi sees that his uncle's low subscriber count is due to his uncle's rude replies in the comments. Ain't no- oh my god, that face. But ain't no way! Bro, if there's one- th hold up. Man got 2 million views on one video alone and has only 800 subs because he's bitching in the comments. Chat, he's fighting in the comments. Oh my god. Chat, you don't understand something. He pulled a Vivzy pop. No! Don't say that! Don't say that! Insisting that his magic is real. Being in such a stressful predicament reminds Yosuke about a time in the other world when the defensive barrier of the sealed city broke and a- Man, this hate comment in the comment section totally reminds me of the time where the defensive barrier of the city broke and we were attacked by Titan Cyclopses. A thousand monsters invaded. After hearing True. this, Takafumi is dying to know what happened. Yosuke shows his memory, he sees an enormous barrier surrounding the entire city. The sure. residents become alarmed, thinking he is an orc, but the elf is the- Thinking he's an orc? How, bro? I love it so much every single time. There, and says he only looks like an orc. <laughs> no! He only looks like an orc. Don't worry, brother. He only looks like one. That's a- it's a- <laughs> I freaking love this show. I love it so much. I love it so much. He only looks like an orc. Brother, who wrote this? Reasoning if he was really an orc, the barrier would have killed him. True, true. Yo, they called him ugly on main so many times. Brother. The elf goes on to explain that the barrier is to ward off mythical beasts in the surrounding area. Okay. 
can you believe this? We're getting lore for a world that he was in for 17 years, which is not even relevant at all right now. So he's not an orc. He's just fucking ugly. He just looks like your average tier 3 only fan sub. Yosuke summons his two energy swords, which shoot a beam of energy, destroying the barrier. The residents panic as Takafumi is left speechless. He questions why his uncle would do such a thing, only to learn his uncle just wanted to see if he could. Oh my god, he's a psychopath. Typical gamer move. Bro, bro thought he was in a Twitter argument. With the barrier destroyed, an army of giant cyclops led by a cloud dragon appear outside sure, the city, sure, preparing sure, 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 to sure. invade. The two assess their dire situation and the elf takes out her legendary sword and prepares to fight. Bro, she could hit me with that legendary sword. Using her magic, she dashes through the sky toward the cyclops, Dashing but the barrier the reforms sky. and she crashes into it. It turns out that Yosuke just asked the spirits to repair the broken barrier and then- <laughs> What?! Bro is like this spiritually attuned mastermind. Oh my god! Hey, you wanna... Wanna reattune the barrier, please? And the spirits are like, sure thing, homie. Oh my god, dude. I love how, like, unabashedly and obnoxiously overpowered he is. But he's just so obtuse. It's okay. And they did. The monsters leave, but the residents are suspicious of Yosuke. However, Damn. the elf defuses the situation and in return for not telling everyone it was him that broke the barrier, she asks Yosuke to take her on a date. Ah, uh, how on earth is he gonna twist that into some way that he didn't understand? Okay, can we just acknowledge right now that Takafumi is basically just watching his uncle get cucked again and again and again? Bro, this man is, look at this face. He is watching porn through his uncle's memories. What kind of cringe ass is that? Fumi is overjoyed at the result, but Yosuke ends up skipping town. <laughs> oh god, the incel too strong. The incel arc too strong. Never, no way. Takafumi is horrified. His uncle fl Bro just wanted to watch porn in his uncle's memories that badly. That's so rough, buddy. Led to avoid being blackmailed by her. Right, 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 because he still didn't realize it was romantic. Shush, 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 you coward. You coward, bro. That ain't incel, that's volcel. You think I know the difference between different incel cl classifications? How he asked the spirits for help, Yosuke decides to ask people to subscribe to his YouTube channel. Takafumi thinks... <laughs> Bro just figured out the call to action trick about how when you say, please subscribe to my channel, it actually works, which is a wonderful time for me to remind you to all please subscribe to my channel. Follow my Twitch when I when I go live, which I do at least twice a week these days. It's really, really dope. Uh, just reminding you. It's a bad idea, thinking that the internet trolls will prey on his weakness. However, the opposite occurs, and more people subscribe to the channel, enough Let's for Yosuke to save his channel. Let's Fujimi go! Fujimi arrives and wonders what is going on between the two of them. Afterward, Fujimi- Why is it your business, bitch? I feel like I'm too antagonistic sometimes. Is that true? Or is it my imagination? Yeah, it's my imagination. Mia lectures Yosuke about being a burden on Takafumi so and how being bitch. a YouTuber isn't financially adequate. Wow! Wow, Fuji, Muji, whatever your name is. Bro, you really gonna do me like that? You're gonna remind me that my video yesterday was age-restricted even though the video that I reacted to was not age-restricted? You're gonna really do that, bro? Yosuke brushes it off. And Fujimiya mentions that Takafumi isn't able to have a girlfriend live with him due to him living there. Hearing this, Yos- That sounds like a Takafumi problem to me. <laughs> now I agree with Nux, she's toxic AF for no bloody reason. She's just toxic for no reason. Why? Why would they make her so toxic for nothing? She's like, oh, so cute and nice and trying to help butt out, woman. Case suggests that. F and I would say that if she was a man also. I'm just saying, as an advocate of gender equality, if she was a dude, I, I would call him an asshole too. Fujimiya. Just, just saying, just saying, you know, just saying, just saying, for real, for real. Live with them. But Takafumi refuses that suggestion. He gets a message about a sale. He's like, bro, but how will I jerk off to my uncle's memories if he leaves? And heads out to the shops. Once Takafumi is gone, Yosuke tries to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Fujimiya about her relationship with- Oh my god, look at that face! Bro, look at this man's face! Holy crap! He looks like the Easter Island heads! He looks like the, the Moi emoji! Takafumi, but she refuses. 
Yosuke talks about the romances he's experienced in video games, but Fujimiya rejects sure, sure, the sure. comparison. Yeah, yeah, Yosuke I leaves why. the room and Fujimiya feels bad and goes to apologize to him, only to find the elf in Yosuke's clothes. Bro, she just showed up somehow and was just around, huh? We really don't know anything about her, do we? Oh my god. She introduces herself as Takafumi's aunt. She then tries. Ain't no way! She introduces herself as Takafumi saying, There's no way, bro! What? Oh my god. Tries to continue her heart to heart with Fujimiya until Takafumi returns home. Takafumi is surprised at the elf claiming to be his aunt. Yeah. He figures out why. that she is his uncle and asks. <laughs> We're gonna hear that one more time. I'm sorry. Just one more time. <laughs> We're just gonna hear that one more time. Hold up. Wait, hold up. Is surprised at the elf claiming to be his aunt. He figures out that she is his uncle. Oh my god! <laughs> when they said we are of one flesh, they didn't mean it this literally. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Okay. No, I get it. Shape shifting. Man used the sexy jutsu, but my god. And asks why he didn't change his appearance in the other world. Yosuke tells him it is a forbidden man. Bro, man found the plot hole. Dude found a plot hole instantly. It's like, dude, they're all harassing you for looking like an orc. You could just shapeshift. <laughs> Magic as you could lose your own identity. Oh, Takafumi nice. comes up with an idea and suggests they shoot a YouTube video about his uncle's transformation magic. Fuck the transformation magic. Shoot a YouTube video with tits. That's the ultimate cheat code. Bro, you could literally hack the system. Although his uncle refuses at first, Takafumi convinces him after promising to play Guardian Heroes with him, and Fujimiya is left confused. As the video was uploaded to the internet, Bro can make multiple OnlyFans? Dude, you think AI cloned women is the meta? No, 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 it's shapeshifting. Every day, shapeshifting all day, all day, all night. That's what it's all about, shapeshifted, baby. They decide to watch a memory of Takafumi's past. Fujimi <laughs> sure they do. is shocked at the magic, but Takafumi convinces her it's just a hologram projector. Mm. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's a memory of how Fujimiya used to bully him. Fujimiya is horrified to remember she was a bully and Bro, they're showing him, they're showing your memories about she was an asshole. That of the sweet memories she had. She tries to stop them from watching, but in the end, they turn out to become friends. The video finishes uploading, and they. I love that he's staying in the uh, in the elf version. Watch it. Takafumi pretends his uncle is a VTuber. Yosuke. What is going on? There is no way the show could get more relatable. What is even happening right now? I cannot believe this. Gay is horrified that the video contains no footage of the game. However, it's an instant success, getting over 200,000 views. All the comments compliment how cute he looks. Takafumi celebrates as Yosuke. Bro, this really is the VTuber mentality. Oh my god, for real, for real. Gay gets depressed and reverts back into his true form, and Fujimiya is shocked at the sight. <laughs> she still doesn't realize that it's magic. Was flying into the balcony not enough? <laughs> I guess. Despite Yosuke's pride getting destroyed, they get to enjoy a nice sushi. What's a little pride, bro? What's a little pride? They found the VTuber meta? True. Like, guys, you probably think that I'm like, uh, some hot guy when in actuality, I'm an incredibly hot girl using a voice changer. I have massive tig old biddies. For real. For real dinner from the money he made. Watching another one of Takafumi's memories, he gets bullied by two boys, but they end up getting bullied by Fujimiya which leads to Takafumi admiring her. That is the most abusive relationship, dude, honest to god. Stay away from this lady. Like, I don't... She abused you, she abused your friends, she abused everyone. Dog, it is not a good track record. Stay away from this woman! Cast her aside now! However, Fujimiya gets depressed seeing this. Fujimiya admits she was a brat, but shows how she became more feminine in middle school. Fujimiya notices her coffee tasting especially nice, and Takafumi tells her he bought a coffee grinder and beans with the- Grinder? <laughs> that sounds like my favorite app! That, uh, for friends, that friends of mine use sometimes, that, that are friends, and, and also, like, uh, you know. Money his uncle gave him for his birthday. Thinking about giving Takafumi a gift, Fujimiya sends him a photo of herself in a swimsuit from- Bro, she knows. 
She knows. For middle school. It was an ugly bastard in another world. Ah! Yo, but I... Middle school? Bro, is that an EDP reference? <laughs> Hoping to entice him. However, Takafumi immediately tries to delete it, not wanting a picture of an underaged girl on his phone. Yeah, true and real and based? Oh my god, she thought he was a Genshin Impact player for a second over there. And Fujimiya is devastated. Takafumi uh, gets an alert for a sale why on coffee are you beans devastated? and heads out to buy them. Sure. Fujimiya has an outburst from the rejection and causes Yosuke to spill his coffee. He reflexively casts ice magic. <laughs> Freaking love this show! This is the greatest show of all time. I don't want to hear anything else. Freezing the coffee, but also Fujimiya. Yosuke uh, thaws her out. Listen, listen, whatever. Pussy is pussy, whatever. No matter the temperature. Out and Fujimiya is left drenched. Yosuke tells her to take her shower. Bro, this poor Fujimiya, she's the butt of every single joke. My god. And he steps out and leaves some of Takafumi's clothes for her to wear as hers dry off. After Fujimiya is done with her shower, she puts on Takafumi's top, but then Takafumi walks in on her. A stare off b- Unironically, this is the greatest thing that could ever happen to a guy. Maybe. This is better than sex. <laughs> Between the two occurs, and Fujimiya then shrieks in embarrassment, causing Takafumi to quickly leave while apologizing. So she crouches down. Oh, great way, great strategy there. Honestly, good plan. I just you just crouch down so your entire ass can be shown to the world. Fantastic strat. However, Fujimiya hopes that Takafumi is enticed after seeing her like that. She out. She's some psycho. She's some crazy. She's some level of crazy right now. My God. But he is so dense he apologizes and tells her he will take responsibility. That, what does that mean? Child support? She ain't pregnant yet, bro. Which confuses Fujimiya. Yeah! Takafumi calls Yosuke home. Dude, it is su this is such a wild anime. I cannot get over this. This is some crazy shit, man. I can't believe this. Every single... Look at this! Look at what he's doing right now! This is fantastic! This is the greatest show ever! And tells him to erase his memory. F no! Okay, that's that's rough, buddy. That's every no way, man. No, don't tell her that you can do that, bro. Just take the sad W, the accidental W. Fujimiya. She's still half naked and hugging him. By the way, just letting you know. Not that I would have noticed without chat pointing it out. Thanks, chat. Stops him, saying that she didn't mind. And to her dismay, Takafumi thanks her for being such a considerate and thoughtful friend. Emphasis on thought. A week later, Fujimiya reveals it's her 20th birthday. Yosuke shares his life philosophy. Tell oh my god, dude, this is gonna be good. Telling her you should never give up because things can change in an instant. Never Fujimiya give up. Fujimiya is impressed by his wise words and Yosuke shows them his memory of his 20th birthday. He is approached by the elf and she joins. <laughs> she confronts him about the barrier he broke and, as a bribe, offers her some food to keep her mouth shut about the barrier. The elf then changes the subject concerning how strong he is. She walks up to him all upset. Hey, how dare you do this thing that I totally disagree with? Would you like some food? Okay, anyway, you want to sleep with me? <laughs> Remembering how he once saved her from a deadly venom dragon, but he brushes it off as hard work and training. The elf asks if this is how he seduces women and Yosuke also mentions how he killed- <laughs> What are women? <laughs> the blaze dragon. The elf is shocked, especially after learning he killed it without the ice sword. Bro! She doesn't believe him, but he shows proof, showing her the fire of the blaze dra sure. dragon. Yosuke explains how his achievements are possible, because he never gives up, as he repeats yes. his life philosophy. Yes! He reveals to the elf that he had learned it from a game strategy guide. Takafumi and Fujimiya- Oh my god. Never give up, as it says in Dark Souls. Never give up when Ornstein and Smo rail your ass for 40 hours straight. Never give up. ...are speechless at the revelation, and Yosuke then goes to play some games. The memory continues. Yosuke invites the elf back to his inn. The elf is reluctant, but he grabs her arm, shocking talk. Oh! Kafumi and Fujimiya. The elf ends up go what? What was that? going along with him, and as the two continue their way back to the inn, Yosuke thanks the elf for supporting him through the tough times. She is shocked to learn how much she means to him. They make it back to the inn, and the elf tells him she would support him forever. However, he tells her it's not necessary and just thanks. What is that goofy animation? Thanks her for supporting him back to his room. 
No! Thank you for supporting me back to my room! What is going on? He locks her out and immediately goes to sleep. The next morning... Bro, this is the saddest thing in the world. This relationship is everything I hate about my own life. The elf confronts him and anyway. demands to know his plans for the day. Talk... Bro, what is with people needing to know your plans for the day? What is with that? Maybe I don't have plans for the day. Maybe my plan is to come up with the plan as the time arises. Huh? Huh? Akafumi is amazed at her resilience, but Fujimiya notices her eyes and realizes she spent the night crying. After, Bro, that's actually so sad. Oh my god. That's actually so sad. Wait. Hold up. What? You're seen. Man broke his heart. Just by being an oblivious dunce. Ain't no way. What? Yes. Fujimiya can't help but take a drink and forces Yosuke to drink as well. Uh, Yosuke okay. stumbles and becomes drunk instantly. And Fu <laughs> sure, sure. Fujimiya tries to bail, but Takafumi stops her. Yosuke decides to take her home. He uses oh, no. a wind spell, causing a huge gust of wind, and the three of them end up high in the sky. Fujimiya suggests that Yosuke become a pro baseball player to make... What? Hold up, you thought he can't make money as a YouTuber when he's already consistently getting views, but you think he can make money as a pro baseball player and what uses fart magic to, to obliterate his rivals or something? Make money. She says that he could use his magic to pitch ultra fast balls. However... Bro, she knows a thing or two about balls. Also, uh, is it just me or are her gadunka dunka ruse on her chest getting bigger and bigger every single season? Yosuke claims that in his youth, he was looked down upon by the baseball team in his class. But he still respected them. Bro, this whole story is just a couple of dudes being bros sitting in their freaking house, listening to their uncle's mopey tales of how he kept not getting laid. As they earnestly practiced daily, so for him to cheat using magic would be against his morals. Yes. Yosuke goes on to talk about how dangerous the terms Base. in baseball sound, like dead ball and stealing bases. Are you fucking kidding me? This man was slaying dragons for a living, and dead ball sounds scary to you? It reminds him of a time he was almost assassinated. Sure, this, this is just family guy isekai. This reminds me of the time when I was almost assassinated, Lois. He then shows the memory in question, where he tirelessly wanders through a forest after completing a dungeon. A person is shown close behind him and is revealed to be Mabel from the ice cl Oh my god! They keep coming back! They don't stop! Oh my lord, they just oh, keep yeah. showing up! She freezes Yosuke's legs in place and tackles him to the ground. Recognizing Mabel, Yosuke asks why she's there. Mabel sarcastically answers that she was relieved of her duties because he killed the dragon without okay. using the ice sword. Not understanding that she was being sarcastic, Yosuke says he is happy for her. Although Yosuke was at her mercy, Bruh. Mabel asks why he didn't defend himself. Yosuke He said... I always wanted to be dominated by a woman, and to that I say, me too. I mean, I understand and respect it, not that it's something that I would ever personally want, ever. But, like, I respect it that, that you want that. Chat believes me. He says that he knows she has no intention of killing him. He then asks her if she's been eating properly. <laughs> what? Okay, sure. Causing Mabel to whimper and cry and pass out onto Yosuke's lap. He then drags Mabel to his room at an inn and places her on his bed. Oh, that looks horrible. Oh, that looks so wrong. Oh, this is everything that is wrong with modern isekai. Oh, that's just terrible. That's, that's terrible, bro. Oh, I hate this. This, I hate it. Oh, that's, that's just, that's gross, honestly. That's just disgusting, yeah. Bed. After Mabel wakes up. Yosuke gives her a loaf of bread and asks why she didn't become a hermit in her village. He needs a specific reason why she didn't want to become a hermit in her village? Mabel says that since she was no longer needed, her tree home was cut down for firewood and- Oh my god, that's tragic, holy shit. And that she was given an ultimatum of either becoming the village pet or leaving. Whoa, wha- what? Nandata! Brother, what is with isekai anime? So she ended up freezing all of the villagers' feet. Tri 
Hey, listen, listen. Everyone has a foot thing every once in a while. Listen, a foot, foot, feet. A foot in the hand is worth two in the bush, as they say. Ripped icy cold water on the necks. <laughs> she froze. <laughs> she froze their feet and dripped ice cold water on their necks. Damn, bro. She out there. She really got them. Damn, man. And then fled. An actual menace to society. The greatest villain arc of all time. Shocked by Mabel's tenacity, Yosuke asks Mabel if she really doesn't like working, to which she mentions a What is what are his questions? Few possible work interests of hers, but notes that they're all too labor demanding. Yosuke relates to her predicament, but notes that he makes his living as an adventurer. He suggests that she could also make a living as an adventurer using the ice sword. Yeah! Despite her hesitance in doing so, Yosuke convinces Mabel claiming she should live her life the way she chooses. Bro, Elated so by the wholesome. suggestion, Mabel claims she'd still need to break the seal on the sword, which and he'll just do it in like four seconds. Just linked to her heart, but believes that becoming an adventurer would fix her gloomy personality. Yes. However, Yosuke claims there's nothing wrong with being an introvert. The ice sword starts to crack and Yosuke continues to compliment her, causing her to blush and the sword to crack. Bro, she's out there, she's coming all over the floor right now. Even further, Yosuke then points out the ring he gave Mabel when she was asleep, saying that it is enough to prove. Bro just gives rings to random women! What is going on with this man? <laughs> Bye for the rest of her life. Mabel misunderstands his intentions and her sword completely melts. She tries to turn him down, but Yosuke insists. She becomes flushed. She just takes the ring off, he puts it right back on. My man. And Yosuke suggests it's getting late and she should stay the night. Mabel asks to first have a bath, but Yosuke sniffs her and says that she doesn't smell bad. Oh my god, this is like the anti-riz. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. Bro, dude, I don't understand how it's working. It just keeps working. I feel like if... I, I, I wish I was him. I wish I was him. Like, bro, you could just... Become the Uncle Isekai that you were always meant to be. He mentions once she sells the ring, she will be able to afford the bath fee. Yosuke clarifies, once she sells the ring, Oh my god, dude. She will never have to worry about money again. Bro, he's just saying, hey, you know that ring I got? You just sell it. Just sell it, bro. Realizing the misunderstanding, her sword is immediately frozen once again. No! Stop! And she tries to attack Yosuke. Sure. The elf comes to see what the commotion is, only to find Mabel restrained and Yosuke holding her down. Seeing this, the elf releases Mabel from her bindings, and she then freezes Yosuke in place no! and bonds with the elf. No! <laughs> the unlikely friendship. The unlikely friendship! The moment your mom walks into the room, true. The elf says how traumatizing it must be to wake up married to an orc, but maybe- <laughs> You did not need to do him like that! Mabel seems to not mind. She goes on to reveal that the people of the Ice Clan share blood with those from another world. She explains oh, the history of the Ice Clan's founding when sure, a samurai sure, 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 sure. from an alternate world was sent there 400 years ago. Sure, 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 sure. The samurai asked the god who reincarnated him to give him a sword capable of slaying a god. However, okay, what is even happening right now? The elf interrupts because she already knows the story, having read it from a book. Mabel is devastated the elf ruined her story and began. What is even happening? Why is this even real in here? I don't understand anything. Begins to cry. Telling the story was one of the few things Mabel knew how to do. Okay, they did that one themselves. You cannot blame me. I did absolutely nothing wrong here. I did nothing. I'll have you know. I'll have you know. I, Nux, am not the guy that did this. He just said that's one of the only things she knew how to do. And I get canceled for, for being sexist. Brother, no way. And she breaks down after it was ruined. The elf apologizes and tries to console her. Don't apologize. Yosuke is outraged that he never got a special bonus like a god slaying sword. Ta okay. Takafumi suggests they look back to the moment when he first was transported to the other world. No! No! You're not gonna make it like he actually had the whole bonus all along. No way! And he, he just anti rizzed the goddess. Brother, why is everyone saying slavery arc incoming? What is happening? What's gonna be? What's Yosuke gonna... rewinds through his memories and finds the moment he was resurrected. 
he runs into some men who beat him, thinking he is an orc. Fujimiya hears a voice interpreted as God, and Takafumi uses his translation app to translate what God was saying. It says that it would grant him an ability of his choice, and Yosuke, at that time, wanted to be able to understand and communicate with the people of that world. Okay, alright, that's why I didn't get the god slaying sword, it all comes together. Thinking that if he could communicate, they wouldn't treat him like a monster. However, he is instead cap- <laughs> No! ...and sold to a freak show as a rare talking orc. He was sold for three bronze coins, Bro! which turns out to be nothing, as some other trash they had sells for 120 bronze. <laughs> they gave him a tuft of fluff? <laughs> I gave him a t what is tough to fluff 120 coins <laughs> rare talking organ mm. three copper this revelation shocks both Takafumi and Fujimiya about Bro. how dirt cheap he was watching this memory Yosuke and Takafumi both get nosebleeds it's then revealed that Yosuke had wiped his memory of this event and Takafumi had his memory erased after reading about it in his uncle's diary. Okay. The memory continues it's in Yosuke- It's just Yosuke. too traumatic, the slavery arc. Wait, when you said there was a slavery arc, I thought he'd find some, like, random animal girl enslaved. Like, you know, they do, like they do in every single isekai anime. I didn't realize he would be the slave. Uh... Okay, is locked away in a prison with other animals. They skip ahead about a week because the slave trader forgot about him. Takafumi oh my god, that's horrible! He and Fujimiya think he's gone mad, talking to himself. But actually Yosuke talked to the ray of moonlight that shone through a crack in the ceiling. Oh yeah, that's much, boy that's much better. Yeah, he, he's not insane, he's just talking to the ray of moonlight. That's whatever, Every, everyone does that. That's like average, average guy talks to ray of moonlight. About the Sega game called Pulse Man. It turns out that the ray of light was actually Killide, the spirit of light. Sure. It teaches Yosuke and grants him his first spell, the sword of light. Yo, that's actually kind of badass. He uses the sword to escape the prison and Fujimiya realizes that it was Yosuke's language translation ability that allowed him to communicate with the spirits. This revelation is also a surprise to Yosuke, who thought his magic ability had come from his ability to adapt thanks to playing video games. No, I think that's still likely, honestly. In the memory, he goes on to free the other captive monsters and then escape. One of the rabbits follows him and Takafumi wonders if he kept it as a pet, but it turns out to be feral. <laughs> sure, sure, of course. And it Nothing good happens to this man. Acts him. All and the good things that do happen to him are accidentally horrible things. Oh my god. The monsters turn feral and attack both him and the slave trader. Not wanting Bro. to live as an ordinary commoner, Yosuke fights back with his newly acquired light magic and saves the slave trader and himself. Cringe. Cringe! Shoulda let him rot. Shoulda let him rot, bro. Although the slave trader is initially thankful, he be <laughs> becomes terrified by the bloody and crazed looking Yosuke, who then used his magic to transfer him to a safe location. Throughout the night, sure. Yosuke continued to kill all the monsters, and in the morning, he cooked them up and ate them. Let's go! PETA, where are you at? PETA, get on this! Yosuke notes how this was a good start to his journey in the other world, shocking both Fujimiya and Agreed. Takafumi. It starts getting late, and Fujimiya decides she should get home for dinner. Yosuke agrees they should have a break, mentioning how things just got worse after that. <laughs> Revealing the time when he saved the elf from a dragon. Oh, that's awesome. Not wanting to miss the story, Fujimiya tells her family to have dinner without her. Yosuke shows his memory of saving the elf from Bro. a venom dragon. He is able to kill it with a single blow, and Fujimiya becomes saddened that she skipped dinner only to see this. There's <laughs> the whole story. It's like, yo, it's not nearly as bad as when I saved the elf from the dragon. And they're like, oh shit, no way. Anyway, so I killed the dragon at the end. Yosuke explains that he merely attacked the spot that the elf had already weakened. As the memory continues, Yosuke gives the elf his hoodie, but she pulls a knife out th <laughs> thinking he is an orc. <laughs> How many times are they gonna do this plot point? At some point they have to stop doing this! Is there gonna be any any point in this entire story where this gets old? Where they stop making the same joke every time? Bro, it's always the British. 
However, she comes to her senses and puts the knife away, oh, but this nice. leads to a misunderstanding with Yosuke. How is that a misunderstanding? Thinking she stabbed herself. He pulls up the hoodie to inspect her stomach. She calls him a pervert and berates him, That's marking weird. the start of their troubled relationship. Takafumi and Fujimiya are left speechless and Yosuke mentions how the elf was always troubling him after that. Like, Damn. She used the portal thingy. Obviously she used the portal thingy, but still, his reaction was to take her shirt off. It's a little, a little wonky. When he was frozen, of which, Fujimiya asks what happened after he was frozen. Yosuke shows his memory as he lies in bed, suffering from the aftermath of being frozen. Dude, I love that they actually wrote, I feel like, when they wrote this story, I feel like they actually wrote an entire isekai story and journey, a beginning and end, with all the trials and tribulations that he went through. And then, they were like, you know what? This is too generic. It's just too generic and boring. You know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna make him wake up. And we're gonna have to relive all this completely out of order through wild memories. And it actually kind of fits in some weird way. It's revealed that both the elf and Mabel stayed in bed with him during the night. Yosuke and the elf have a moment sure, sure, together. Ayo! Sure. Ayo! Whoa! Uh. Just wanted to see that again, how it happened, just for research. The elf and Mabel stayed in bed with him during the night. Yosuke and the elf have a moment together, but it's ruined by Mabel, who Oops. cries for her mother in her sleep. Oops. But it's just about not wanting to work, and the elf wakes her Listen, up guys, with a karate anyone would have done that. A I'm flustered saying. Mabel tries to explain her sleep talk concerning not wanting to work. Yosuke reminds her that she can sell the ring. Including not paper, wanting to work. Mabel is hesitant. Yeah, we got we got our, so, ourselves the the socialist in the group. Let's fucking go, baby. And to do it, saying that she is inexperienced with bartering, the elf enthusiastically offers to help her sell it, but Mabel decides to hold on to it. Yosuke ah! suggests that the elf can take care of Mabel, and Mabel believes it would mean becoming the elf's pet. Afterward, they all eat breakfast together. And Mabel formally introduces herself to the elf and Yosuke. Oh, he, like totally by accident, albeit through all of his best attempts to destroy his harem, he managed to get one. The elf doesn't share her name and simply refers to herself as elf and reveals her mission to collect ancient relics. Damn. Yosuke introduces himself as Wolfgangblood. That's my Xbox gamer tag. Shocking Takafumi and Fujimiya with his fake name. He tells them that he is from another country trying to make his way back to his home. Takafumi asks his uncle why he gave them a fake name. Yo, I have to go by Wolfgang Blood. It's like, you know, you just meet some random guy. What's your name? Dark X Wolf 17. You know, you'd be all cool about it. And his uncle tells him he didn't want to give his name out to strangers. True. After that, the elf announced that she'd be heading back to Icosa. My man didn't want to get doxxed or something. My name is Wolfkinblood. From Vulka Fenrika. Yes, 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 yes. Now she sold her ring at. Yosuke asks her why, but it's clear to Takafumi and Fujimiya that she wants to buy her ring back, feeling threatened by Mabel. Ma oh my god! Mabel then asks what Yosuke will be doing, and he claims he'll try and checking out a nearby dungeon that a why hero they was like trying him? to clear. Mabel understand. offers to help him, however, she needs to take a nap first and Yosuke heads off on his own. And this is how the heroes part ways until probably five minutes. Yosuke notices how late it's getting and calls it for the day. A starving Fujimiya wishes she had gone home for dinner, so Yosuke treats her and Takafumi to some ramen. In another memory, nice. we see the elf as she wakes up. She tries to grab her necklace with her feet. Yosuke Bro, brother managed to keep teleported through the door. <laughs> She's doing this shit. He asks for his hoodie back, but she refuses. Oh my god, dude, they're so cute. It's not fair. Saying that it belongs to her now. Yosuke is determined to get it back, using his magic to restrain her. Bro, what is even happening right now? There's no way. Dude, dude they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. They get cuter, don't worry. It's like, it's not fair how adorable they are. I have never felt... Like, until now, when I watch, like, isekai anime and I see, like, cringe stuff happen, all right, whatever, it's cringe, it's typical anime, cuteness, whatever, sure. I am, like, get, I am actually angry. This dude actually gets me angry. I've never felt, like, literal, actual anger towards an isekai character before. He starts taking it off her. What is even going on right now? 
<laughs> what is going on? <laughs> but struggles because the magic is getting in the way. Oh. The elf suggests he can un- She's sitting on her- she chained her up with magic lasers. And he's just like, alright, now I'll just- I'll just take your clothes off. Do the spell to make it easier on himself. And he foolishly agrees. But after he undoes the spell, the elf attacks him. Damn, who could have seen that coming? Yosuke is completely knocked out, and the elf feels bad. Bro, this elf is unbelievable. My god. Holy crap. Get yourself a girl like this elf. Holy shit, man. She quickly patches him up and leaves him in the room. Yosuke mentions how messed up this was, and Takafumi can only agree- I love how this is still in his memories, somehow. Man is still somehow in his memories. Man, literally unconscious. But don't worry, this is just his memories. So they actually uh, mentioned in the anime, I believe, that he did some editing so that it flows better, which is the craziest thing you'll ever hear. But it's kind of hilarious. Three, but he thinks that his uncle should have just let her have the hoodie. Yosuke says that the elf always took his stuff and never returned anything. True. And the only thing he ever got was her dress, which they end up- What? What? Getting Fujimiya to try on. See- What? Why? <laughs> this is- This is so creepy! Bro! Like, I get it, it's funny and whatever. It's actually so creepy! Here in the dress, Yosuke finds himself actually missing the elf. Man is slipping. Afterward, Yosuke announces that the official name of his language translation skill would be Wild Talker, a name that Takafumi okay. suggested. Fujimiya suddenly notices the time and has to leave, saying she has some college work to do. Takafumi watches his uncle play Golden Axe, and his uncle shows him how he can get the enemy to walk to their own death. He's- Whoa, that's crazy! This man can literally shoot laser beams and fly and teleport. Says that his gaming saved the day in the other world, and he brings up his memory. Bro, this whole show is like an actual fever trip. Memory of when he worked with some other adventurer. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually upset. Like, until now, it was like all cute. But there gets to a point where I'm just upset that this man did not go further. Like, I get it, this is the ultimate blue ball experience. But like, come on, man. The adventurers are shown attacking him, and he skips ahead to after overpowering them, and explains he is not a goblin. The group's healer, Alicia. <laughs> is that a new one? Oh my god, it's a new one to add it to the harem. Add it to the harem. And recognizes Yosuke as the person everyone else mistook for an orc during the winter festival. Her companions are introduced as Raiga and Edgar. Dis I'm sure they'll be very important. Despite their hesitation, Alicia asks Yosuke to help them protect a village from a goblin invasion, and he immediately agrees to help. Let's a go. horde of goblin approaches, Let's but go. Yosuke tells the others he has a plan. He taunts the goblins, and they rush at him, and start beating him up. Oh, good plan. Damn. Takafumi is not impressed. <laughs> I was about to say, like, mm -hmm, yeah, wow. And Yosuke says his plan to lure them into a pit didn't work for some reason. He then goes to use the... I thought he, he just said he learned this from video games. This is how the video game strategy literally failed. Jump attack he learned from his game. He attempts to move against the goblins, but oh. he misses every time. Oh, In the end, no. he destroys a mountain. Which crushes all the, <laughs> what the frick? This is this is how the video game strats literally did not work. What is even happening? Goblins, and he thanks his game for giving him the moves to defeat the goblins. Takafumi points out that the moves from the game didn't help. My favorite thing about this show so far is how these are all memories. They've already happened. There are no stakes to anything, and yet you're just totally invested in the sheer dumb fuckery of it all. So true. This is not a show about stakes. This is a show about how dumb is this man? But all. But Yosuke is on copium and insists they saved him. After that, mm -hmm. the group heads back to the town for their reward. Yosuke finally seems to have made friends. But along uh... the way, Alicia mentions how she saw him rebuild the barrier in the sealed city. Hearing this, Yosuke erases her memory. Bro is doing anything in his power. This is like... You know those speed runs on YouTube? It's like the have sex speed run. This man is speed running. He is grinding so hard every possible way. Nev do, do not get your dick wet any percent speed run. Brother. Along with Edgar and Raiga's memories. Despite this, Yosuke would go on to meet them again. And after fighting them once again. <laughs> he erased their memories that they ever met him. So next time they see him, they think he's a freaking orc again. And they fight him again. Again. And then he has to...
Oh my god, you're joking! Clearing up the misunderstanding that he's not an orc, oh you tell him god. that they are after a giant hedgehog that has been attacking a nearby village. Sure, sure. Hearing this, he imagines Sonic and pro Oh my god, dude. Proclaims that they should try to communicate with the monster and try to find a peaceful solution. The hedgehog appears, and he becomes disappointed. Oh man, it's not the furry Sonic hentai inflation that I expected. Oh man, his Chris Chan training didn't actually pay off after all. Seeing that it looks nothing like Sonic, he talks with it using his ability. He tries to reason with it, but finds that it just enjoys killing humans for fun. <laughs> when they make the monster just be like, yeah, there's nothing to reason with, I just like killing humans. And Yosuke completely incinerates it, oh, well, leaving nothing that's... but ash. Suddenly a phone rings, and Takafumi sees that Fujimiya left her phone. Takafumi convinces his uncle to help him return the phone, and they fly to her location. Sure. When they get there, they see that she is with a shady looking- Bro, how does this happen? Dude, every- every anime ever. Oh my god, straight out of every anime on the planet. Man. Yosuke lends his power to Takafumi just sure. in case, sure, sure, and he sure, approaches sure, sure. her and returns her phone. The man becomes apprehensive, but Takafumi realizes he is actually Chiaki, Fujimiya's what? younger brother. Not, they not see me. that she is with a shady looking man. This is her brother? This is her younger brother? Is that gonna make you feel any better? It's like, oh, that's just her younger brother. Oh, sure, hell yeah. This is all swell and cool and nice. Nah, ain't no way. Ain't no Yosuke way. That makes Fujimi it worse, bro. That makes it worse. He is younger brother, and he is overjoyed to see him after so many years. Oh, that's nice. Yosuke joins them, and Fujimiya introduces him to her brother as a YouTuber. Honestly, this is so real. I feel that. She was shitting on him for being a YouTuber for like the first five episodes of the show, saying you can't really make money, you shouldn't be a YouTuber, you should do literally anything else. But now, when you're coming to introduce him to someone as your friend, oh, I know this guy, he's a YouTuber. Wow. Wow, this uncle is literally me. He's literally me. Literally me. It's like when people tell me, Why are you a YouTuber? You should become a lawyer. You should go get a real job. You should do something helpful to society. You should become a doctor. Being a YouTuber is cringe. It's cringe. It's cringe. And then they introduce me. It's like, oh, he's a YouTuber. He has millions of followers. But Chiaki so has no clue who he is. As Yosuke explains what he does on YouTube, Takafumi reveals to Fujimiya how he was prepared to protect her. Fujimiya asks what he would have done if Chiaki was a shady guy, and Takafumi reveals the powers he borrowed from his uncle. He turns them both invisible, sure. leaving doubles of them behind. What the fuck? Why would he do that? Why would he do this? <laughs> Flying up to a higher location, Fujimiya is surprised he can use the magic so well. They head into an empty classroom, and Fujimiya says that this was just like in school, when he stepped in when she was getting ganged up on. Takafumi can't- SHE WAS THE BULLY! Okay, I don't, I'm not gonna make believe this makes sense. ...quite remember, sure, so sure, he sure, plays sure. the memory in question. Oh but it turns God, out dude. that Fujimiya was actually the one that was picking on the group of kids. Oh, never mind. I was right after all. And Takafumi misread the situation, and thought she was getting ganged up on. Despite oh. this, Fujimiya was still flattered by Takafumi's- you might be a little bitch that couldn't actually help me. You might be a little beta male son of a cuck with a small penis, but I was flattered you tried. I don't know, does that sound good to you? Good intentions. A girl suddenly walks in on them shocked. She is Fujimiya's friend, Tawa, and Takafumi introduces himself to her. They get along well, and Fujimiya- TOO WELL! Mia gets a bit jealous of them. They get back to Takafumi's home, a and Yosuke continues well. on with his memory. Sure. He asks the trio if they have heard about the hero that's around. Alicia borrows Edgar's sword and reveals that she is the hero known as What? The Shining Crusader. That's like the, the lamest plot twist on the planet. She damages the sword and immediately bows down, apologizing to Edgar. Yeah. Fujimiya is shocked to see that this is the legendary hero party. When Yosuke looks at Alicia's memory, he sees that they took credit for stopping the goblin invasion, although Bro. they have no memory of it. Bro, cause he stopped him! No way! Alicia once again asks him if he was the one who repaired the barrier in the Too sealed real. city, causing him to be on alert, but she retracts it, claiming she understands his desire to keep a low profile and promises to keep his secret. Uh, Yosuke and the hero party travel together and reach the labyrinth of darkness yeah. in a ranked dungeon. Upon entering the dungeon, 
Yosuke immediately casts a spell that reveals a secret shortcut at the end of the battle. <laughs> Bro is so overpowered. He literally makes the entire world just feel cringe. He cheats so much. Passage. They find the dungeon's treasure, the Wand of Salvation, but the party is completely underwhelmed with how easy they got it. Yosuke realizes what he did, and he wipes their memories. Oh my god! It's an A-rank dungeon. He figures out a cheat code right off the bat. He zips to the very, very end of the whole dungeon. They get it without any struggle at all. They feel underwhelmed because the adventure wasn't that good. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. Anyway, I'll remake their memories and put them back in the beginning. He drags them back out. Oh, my God. He literally does. This is so bad. This this guy is he's not fair. Outside. Just knowing this person is a nightmare. Them go through the he's the dedicated DM dungeon properly and actually earn the wand. Takafumi is glad that things turned out well, but Yosuke wants to erase their memories again. Why? Oh my god, dude! Make them forget that he helped them. But Alicia is overjoyed, saying this is a memory she will never forget. <laughs> and Yosuke decides not to wipe their memories wow. before leaving for the He decides not to manipulate these people. That's so nice. Wow. Capital, Yosuke receives three healing charms from Alicia as thanks for his help conquering the dungeon. When the memory ends, Takafumi and Fujimiya praise Yosuke for handling the situation with a calm and cool head. But Very Yosuke wholesome. says he learned to keep cool thanks to his video games. Oh my god, stop it bro, stop please, this man is coping so hard! Takafumi wonders what happened after his uncle went to the capital, so his uncle continues the memory. Let's go. We see him confronting a group of soldiers. I love how he chains them all with like these holy epic god chains. And he uses his magic to read the commander's mind. Sure. He learns who was behind making Alicia a hero. He vanishes and heads toward the capital. We right. see a meeting between the commander and Chief Ricardo. Nah. Is there actually world building? This is like world building in the backstories. They are world building the actual backstory of this character. For no reason. With no stakes. Just because... Why not? High Priest. We learn that the hero party was meant to be a martyr, create a crisis, and boost Damn. their military funding. Damn! They just... <laughs> it's America, for real, for real. This is just America! Hey, America! Let's go, fucking America! Yosuke appears, reading Ricardo's mind. The commander defends his actions, claiming Bro. that the hero party knew what they signed up to become adventurers. They're capitalists, to their core. They'll never stop. But because of his timid attitude, Yosuke couldn't argue against Ricardo's logic and gets surrounded by soldiers. In this predicament, Yosuke transforms into the greatest monster he could think of. An orc. He just turns into himself. Please, please. Turning into his middle school homeroom team. No! <laughs> what is even happening? I've seen this clip. I've seen this clip. Sure. I didn't get this far in the anime, but dude got even uglier and just started yelling at them. I love this. He tells Takafumi that his teacher was the best debater he ever knew. He just ends up slapping Ricardo into submission. He slaps him repeatedly. <laughs> when Ricardo's aide him. tries to defend him, he slaps her as well. Yeah. And <laughs> dude, is that not the greatest thing in the world? Is that not just beautiful? Oh my god. Both concede to him. Ricardo explains that the world has been unstable, with strange things happening occurring, the blaze dragon being slain, the sealed right, city barrier being broken, That's realizing right. he was the one behind these events, he couldn't bring himself to continue slapping them. There is a sudden blast of energy, and Mabel appears. Yosuke right. returns to his original form, and her power instantly melts. Wait, didn't he say he'd give this whole thing about how shapeshifting was forbidden? An epic battle between the two occurs. But in reality, it's an illusion created by ice magic, and they are really just watching from <laughs> no! the sidelines. No! <laughs> oh! oh my god, dude. Yosuke asks what she is doing here, and Mabel reveals that she became a knight of the kingdom. She oh, has nice. grown an ego after getting a job. She tells him... <laughs> it's like, I'm paid $12 an hour now. I own the world! ...to join her. Ah, oh, yes, you socialist swine! What are you, a communist? She tells him to throw the fight so she can get a pay raise and make him her underling. Bro! She is playing the system! 
This is like when the YouTuber is like, I'll invite you to my game if you throw if you throw the game show and you let me win. But Yosuke can't accept losing to her. The soldiers see them for real. After their illusion became too ridiculous, the commander suggests that Mabel is in cahoots with Yosuke. No! Mabel starts fighting him for real, even wounding real, some soldiers real. as Yosuke dodges her attacks. Yosuke unleashes his energy sword, and using his speed, he shatters her ice. Mabel comes to her senses, and it turns out she was being mind controlled by the high priest. Yosuke Average priest activity. K condemns Ricardo for working with a man that uses such tactics. Ricardo worries how they will be able to protect the kingdom, but Yosuke vows to protect them from any crisis that arises, Let's transforming go. into the blaze dragon to show his strength, and he flies away. Shit. Takafumi and Why? Fujimiya are amazed at how cool he was, but he reminds them it was all thanks to his gains. Sometime after that, Bro, stop is it! devastated. She loses her position as a knight of the kingdom. Oh, that's With the memory over, Takafumi has somehow grown scales all over his body. He thinks back to when he borrowed his uncle's power, and says he used the spells with shortened incantations. His uncle tells him that the shortened incantations are like being rude and demanding to the spirits, so Bro, this is a punishment for that. The spirits are punishing you for being a bitch and not following the instructions. Oh my god. Fujimiya panics seeing Takafumi transforming, but Yosuke tells her not to worry, and ends up yeah, transforming good, himself as well, so what? Takafumi isn't alone. I feel like that that that's like supposed to be some kind of emotional climax and it's just They both turn into dinosaurs and Fujimi <laughs> What the fuck is this show? I feel like every episode of this show could be a Mr. Beast video. We took a hundred dinosaurs into New York City. Mia is left stunned. There is a major heat wave across Japan, and Takafumi and Yosuke are feeling its effects. That's rough, when right? Yosuke tries to play on his Sega Saturn, it fails to boot, and he starts no. having a meltdown. No. Fujimiya comes over and why is she there? He wonders why Yosuke doesn't just use some magic to cool the place down. Yosuke immediately casts his ice magic, blasting the room with an icy breeze, so and they thank her for coming up with such a genius yeah. idea. Fujimiya wonders so what the spirits God, if only I had a woman to, to be smart when I was dumb. Actually look like, and Takafumi imagines a pair of beautiful fairies. <laughs> the one like shy one. And the one, like, dominant one. <laughs> sure, man. But Yosuke explains that the spirits don't actually have physical forms, but are more like a collection of wills. Yeah, true. That's why when, uh, when he imagines having sex with a collection of wills, it's not weird. And he is only able to hear their voices. Yosuke suddenly hears a spirit, and then says that they need to get a cow's head. Talk- A cow's head?! Kafumi looks it up on his phone, but it would cost 5 million yen. Yosuke explains that the ice spirit he summoned to cool down the room is asking for the head as compensation for its work. It wants them to make an altar and offer the cow's head, oh my or else God. it will freeze their fields for 10 years. Oh shit, son. However, it changes its mind and accepts a fish head as a compromise. All right, makes an sense. altar is set up, but Yosuke starts craving the fish head, blaming no, the craving them when they stop. transformed into dinosaurs, and we see how they terrorized Fujimiya. Oh my god, this show is, it's evil! This is monstrous! Yosuke warns that it can be dangerous to be transformed for too long, as he pulls up his memory of when he was transformed as the Blaze Dragon. He became trapped in the dragon's thought pattern for a month, and unable to transform back, but eventually the elf found him after following a rumor about his location, and fights him. They have an epic battle. But ultimately, Bro, that's a pretty epic battle. Like, there's actual budget in these fights. The elf fights. managed to overpower him and mentally connects with his mind. And mentally connects with his mind. Damn, that's some good ChatGPT scripting you got there. Helps him revert back to his human form. Afterward, a noble accompanied by an army of soldiers who wanted to deal with the dragon arrives. The elf recognizes him as the head of the Regfulgen family. Bro, no guy with a haircut like this is not a dick. That's just that's just a rule. To whom she owes money. It's also revealed that the elf is a princess, shocking both Takafumi and Fujimiya. <laughs> sure, sure. The memory continues as Rig Falgen demands Yosuke and provokes the elf, prompting her to draw her weapon, but is stopped because of a magical pact that they made. Rig Falgen calls fool. the elf you forgot about the magical pact. as collateral, but Yosuke wakes up and just destroys the magical restraint. Bro is so overpowered, it's like not even funny. Believing he's repaid the debt to her, he tries to leave, but is held back by the elf. 
With the pact gone, a giant warrior steps up for Rig Falgen, okay. ready to teach the elf a lesson. But before they can fight, Yosuke gives Rig Falgen a ring. Oh my god, he does this to <laughs> It's like so tight on his finger. <laughs> He gives this ring to everyone! To help pay off the elf's debt, sure, seeing sure. him give away another ring Bro. makes the elf enraged, causing her to shake the ground as she powers up. The ground starts to crumble, and Yosuke grabs onto the elf as the ground below them falls, revealing a swamp. Rig Falgen is distraught over the <laughs> ring stuck on his finger and up. just orders his men to retreat. We learn that the reason the elf <laughs> fell into debt was so she could buy back the ring he had given to her. Bro, ain't no way. Ain't no way. This, this is wild. The character writing is actually kind of awesome. That's crazy. Seeing they are covered in mud, they head to a nearby hot spring to get cleaned up. God, nice. Later that day, Hell we yeah. see Fujimiya's friend Sawa arrive at the apartment complex and She's she is back. approached by Chiaki. She is creeped out by him. Yeah, I wonder why. And when Takafumi comes down the stairs, his nonchalant attitude makes Sawa even more nervous. As they walk up the what? stairs, Chiaki talks about his collection, catching a cutie, and posting a video online, causing Sawa to continue to panic. When they get inside, Sawa warns Fujimiya that Chiaki and Takafumi are scumbags that think of women as collectibles. We sees the fish head altar in the living room. <laughs> She freaks out and tries to leave, thinking they are in a cult. However, before she can leave, Yosuke returns and makes Bro. things worse. He smile. Despite this, Fujimiya ends up explaining that it's not a cult, and Yosuke is just a YouTuber. Saw a f oh my god, stop it! Why are you doing me this badly? Finds it strange that Fujimiya is hanging out here. But You're the same? Realizes what does that mean I'm the same? That she has feelings for Takafumi. So she decides to test if Takafumi also has feelings, showing him pictures of the two of them to see his reaction. However, Takafumi becomes more fixed. No way he zooms into the feet. There is no shot. Shaded on the random men in the background. What the frick, huh? Sawa becomes interested to know what Fujimiya was like in elementary school, and Takafumi tells her she looked very similar to her brother Chiaki. Sawa wonders how Chiaki is doing, not recognizing that the shady guy was Chiaki all along. Yosuke decides to just show oh Sawa what Fujimiya God. was like back in elementary school. Every character in this show is just insane. But is immediately stopped by Takafumi. Realizing he revealed his magic, he immediately goes to erase their memories, but gets restrained by Takafumi Why? while Fujimiya helps the other two escape. Why? I just erase their memories! After this, Fujimiya scolds Yosuke for always resorting to erasing memories, and this reminds him of a similar situation with the elf at the hot spring. Bro, this is literally Family Guy. This is Isekai Family Guy, just with decent characters. Five at the hot spring, Yosuke is surprised to see the sign in Japanese. The elf notes that the hot spring's founder also came from another world, Yo! but has since passed away. The owner of the inn comes out, explaining that the inn was created using the power of God, but Yosuke just organizes his inventory, treating it as game dialogue that he can't skip. <laughs> he just talks to people in real life and he's just like, alright, whatever, just not paying attention, doing something else, playing Pokemon Go at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Much to Takafumi and Fujimiya's dismay, they end up getting a room at the inn, and Yosuke is annoyed when he finds out he has to share a room with the elf. Aw, oh, yeah, Korean sharing a room with a woman? Aw, oh, yeah, I would hate it if that would happen, bro. I, it, my, my loneliness is a choice, okay? It's a choice. The owner's daughter offers to prepare him a room of his own, but the elf scares her away. The elf is excited seeing their room, but Yosuke drags his futon away to another room. The elf Aww, is shocked at the tiny room and disappointed she'll be resting alone. But Yos Aww, Yosuke suddenly returns and starts giving her a foot massage against her will. Okay, listen, this is not the first thing I wanted the Raiders to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird anime. Okay, listen, he's just... He's, uh, he's, listen, he just, he doesn't, like, he, uh, doesn't, listen, guys, listen, it's not that, it's not like that. <laughs> no, you don't understand. You don't understand. Chaos King, thank you so much for the sub. No, you don't understand, guys. Listen, he, uh, this is, he's just very obtuse. He just doesn't get social cues. He, he did in a holy, in a wholesome way. Thanking her for helping him re for free? Return from being a dragon. The 
And she orgasms all over the place. Elf can't handle the massage. She can't handle it, bro. Too much. But he drags her back and continues on. Bro, oh. this is... This gets interrupted when Alicia and Raiga are revealed to be used. Ichigo Kurosaki, thank you for the sub. I appreciate the support. Dropping. Alicia apologizes to the elf, but oh, ends yeah. up flattering her when she thinks that they are a couple, and the elf even shows off her ring. Oh my god, dude. This show, it doesn't stop. It's a literal train wreck of misunderstandings and, and whack job characters. Yosuke asks them what they were doing here, and they tell him that- Nux loves short elf girls? Where's the lie? That they were training up in the mountains. Alicia thanks him once again for the Wand of Salvation, and the elf is shocked to see the legendary magic weapon. Right- Dude, I love how all of the random backstories are actually intertwined. This- it's writ- this show is written so well, better than it has any right to be. Ika tells Yosuke that they were training a new skill, and is keen to see it, so he plays Alicia's memory, and sees their new skills in action. However, this also reveals a fancy sheath being used as a laundry rack, and Jesus. upon seeing it, the elf asks where the group found it, and immediately heads off to look for it. Yosuke okay. explains that the sheath was actually an ancient magic tool, and the elves have a goal to collect them. The group suddenly sure. notices something burning, and we see that the inn is under oh attack my God, by a hypno beast. Dude, that looks just like the uncle. It took control of the owner's daughter and had her open the door. Yosuke. Oh, because the hypno beast couldn't break through the door and needed her to open it. Tries to use his magic, but there are two birds in the sky that are blocking his magic. He ends up struggling without his magic. Oh my god, up what is that using animation? Using some magic charms to fight. He uses a wind charm to fly himself up, attacking with a fire charm, and slowing his fall with an ice charm. There is still one bird left, but it gets blasted out of the sky, as we see the elf using her new weapon from the mountain. Yo! Why is that so badass? And seeing that he isn't looking at her, the elf shoots at him to get his attention, but... <laughs> It's so crazy. It leads to another one of their misunderstandings. Dude, it's so funny. This whole show, it's like she just does regular tsundere things that every weeb wishes would happen to them. And he just thinks she's abusing him. Fujimiya wonders how the bird sealed his magic, and it turns out they have a terrible breath which causes the spirits to be suppressed. Dude. They actually thought that through. When he tries to use his magic, it still doesn't work because the smell is still lingering. So he heads back to Alicia and the others, but finds her being chased by her friends. <laughs> Show is every scene! Who have also been hypnotized. He regroups with her and wonders if she can undo the hypnotization with her wand. The hypnotization. He grabs it, thinking it might have a secret function like the elf's sword and the wand flies up into the sky, oh bursting God, with what? light. Two barriers are created, and <laughs> Alicia becomes flustered with- Oh my God, stop, every time! Hi, Mr. Nux, your hair looks great. Oh, thank you, Miss Hilo. Thank you for popping into the stream. I hate that all these people I know are showing up to this part of the stream where I'm watching the recap of Isekai Uncle, which is just so weird. With Yosuke on top- Guys, it's not what it looks like. Why are you here now? Go away. <laughs> Why is it like this? Why every single scene? Top of her, after she calms down, yeah. she uses her magic, sinking her mind with the three of them and is able to free them from the beast's control. The hypno beast suddenly attacks her, but she dodges and sends it flying using one of Raika's techniques. Yosuke reveals that the wand boosted her strength and when she sinked her mind to free the others, she gained their techniques. Oh, the God, beast gets back what? up and makes a run for it summoning a bunch of monster hounds in the process. But Yosuke's magic finally returns, as he restrains them all, summoning water serpents, and defeating all of the dogs. Bro is way too powerful, holy crap. Water pours down thanks to his spell, and the rest of the fire is put out. Afterward, Yosuke puts up a barrier around the now exposed bathing area, <laughs> which actually pleases the owner, because they now can have a lovely mountain view. Aww. Everything turns out well, but Fujimiya wonders how this story was related to getting scolded for erasing memories. Yo, true! Right? This whole story started and it's like, dude, you erase people's memories too much when they see things that they shouldn't. You have to learn from your mistakes. And he's like, that reminds me of a story. And then he tells this whole story that has nothing to do with that at all. Yosuke says that after the battle, he had another bath in the hot spring 
and he was joined by Alicia. Oh, God. As she gets closer, her skirt gets caught, oh, and she God. ends up revealing herself, causing him to immediately erase his own memory. Yo <laughs> this guy is such a simp. He is such a simp. Oh my God, he's... This guy is what every Reddit mod wishes they were. This guy acts cool, having forgot what he just saw, and Alicia thinks he- Yo! He did- He erased his memory not because he's a cuck simp loser. He erased his memory because now he won't act- Oh my god, now he'll act cool because he doesn't remember seeing anything. And she'll be like, so excited that he's such a giga chad. My man erased his memory for the Riz. My god, this man's a legend! He must have no interest in a little girl like her. Oh, that sounded really weird. I would take that out of the script, honestly. That was horrible. But is then shocked to find out that she is actually slightly older than him. I, I, I would keep that in, yes, that's much better. Alicia is devastated, but thinks her birthday could be wrong, because she has what? no memories of before she was nine. That's Using rough. Yosuke's memory magic, we see that she was found after a goblin attack. Oh, that's she rough. had no memories and was saved by the guards. She was adopted into the village where- Can you believe this? We are getting a deep dive into the backstories of a side character of his past that he's saying as a reference to the modern day where he's explaining why he doesn't- why he erases people's memories. Where Raiga and Edgar lived, and she treasures every memory that they've made. Hearing this, Yosuke feels guilty and admits that he has erased her memories twice. He reveals Bruh. that he was the one who stopped the goblin invasion, and the time they went through the back door of the dungeon, Alicia realizes that he should have the hero title, remembering how he fixed the barrier in the sealed city. That's the fourth time she remembered he fixed the barrier. <laughs> yes, this is the Uncle Isekai Metal Hulk. But Yosuke tells her that he was the one that destroyed it in the first place. Damn. He explains that he is from another world, and hoped that if he attacked the strongest barrier with his strongest attack, he might create a distortion in space-time to let him go back. Bruh. Alicia- I love how they're only revealing this now. You know, 10 episodes later. Forgives him, but tells him not to erase any more memories, saying she doesn't want to forget him. Yosuke concedes, and ends up promising not to erase any memories about her. Please erase her memories right now. It's like, I promise I won't. And she turns around, then he erases her memories, and it's like, Ha! You won't remember, I promise, bitch! But Alicia suddenly remembers how he erased his memory after seeing her earlier. Oh, damn. Yosuke demands to know what happened. Not <laughs> oh my god, he's such a loser! He's such a loser! There's no way! Not wanting to break his promise. Although embarrassed, Alicia prepares to recreate the site. Oh my god, he's such a loser. But they suddenly get sniped at. <laughs> the elf is in the distance. <laughs> the elf in the distance doesn't want to get NTR'd. She's just sitting there sniping at <laughs> any woman that might reveal skin. And Yosuke is shocked his barrier was broken. There are more shots fired, and Yosuke makes a run for it, while Alicia is left behind. One month later, Yosuke takes on a quest Bro. to slay a singing monster. It sings a song about the three shrines and trials of the land. Yosuke uses his magic and charges at the beast, but he ends up crashing when he realizes the monster was actually just Mabel. Not again! She just keeps showing up in the craziest ways! He wonders what she is doing out in the woods, worried she might get attacked by monsters, but Mabel shows off her cloak, which lets her disguise herself as a monster. He starts petting her, but she gets embarrassed. He wonders. Who wrote this? <laughs> Someone wrote this stuff. Can you believe it? Here's why she isn't in the capital working as a knight, since he doesn't know she got fired. Mabel pretends that she quit her job to be more free, and explains that she lives in the forest and put up a scary ice. Basically, she's homeless. Sculpture to scare off anyone that approaches, so she can live here forever, uh, realizing she. Nothing like being alone and wallowing in your own misery. I can relate. Is the singing monster, Yosuke prepares to fight her. Mabel is terrified, and immediately agrees to leave. She takes down the ice statue, and she wonders what she is going to do. Yosuke reminds her that she'll be fine. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Looks at her boobs. Because she can just sell the ring he gave her, but she insists on keeping it. Bro, this man, this man, he gives rings to everyone. Yosuke suggests she could make money as a bard. But Mabel gets embarrassed and says she is used to singing alone. Yosuke thinks that since she is cute and can sing, she would have easily become rich as an idol in Japan. Damn! <laughs> Cause it's that easy, right? It's that easy. Mabel fantasizes about getting rich, but Yosuke thinks about how he can get back to his own world. 
Hoping to cheer him up, Mabel offers to sing a song from his homeland. Takafumi wonders what song he chose, but it ends up It's gonna be some idle gotcha cringe Just being the background music from the Sonic the Hedgehog game That is honestly so much better than I could have even guessed <laughs> This whole show is crack! Oh my god! He ends up passing out on Mabel's lap I mean, whatever happens to all of us, I guess And she keeps singing for him, but there are some knights that plan to ambush them However, the elf appears, taking the men out She's just there. She sensed his head touching another woman's thighs. And she glares toward Yosuke on Mabel's lap. Bruh. Yosuke thinks she is nice for saving them, but Takafumi and Fujimiya can clearly see she is furious. Takafumi asks his uncle about his love for video game music, and his uncle decides to put some on. But when he reads the- <laughs> I'm gonna put on some video game music. Manual, he finds out he has been mispronouncing the hero's name for the last decade, and he has a meltdown. <laughs> No! What is that face he's he makes? He's been mispronouncing the hero's name for the last decade, Bro, and he has a meltdown. The ultimate thumbnail face. Now you know he's a YouTuber. Now you know how he became a YouTuber. He just puts this at the corner of the thumbnail. <laughs> the dude is super ugly. He is. It's amazing. When Yosuke tries to record a YouTube video as the elf, he can't. I love that he's literally decided he's just gonna full on catfish his audience. That's just insane. Just like me. I mean, like like so many other VTubers not, that aren't me. Pain the appearance and is still down about his mistake. Fujimiya thinks it's not a big deal getting the name wrong, but he argues that names are important, mentioning the time when the elf told him. Oh, names are important. That reminds me of the time when I. Real name. The two are shocked to hear this and insist on seeing the memory. The morning after he met Mabel, the elf confronts him about what he has been up to with Mabel and Alicia. She doesn't like that he keeps calling them by their names when she has- True, that is cringe. Calling a woman by their name, bro. That's wild. That's crazy. Cute moment incoming, get your heart ready, Nux. Oh God. Known him longer, but he says that she never revealed her name to him. They get into an argument oh God. because she knows that he hasn't told her his real name either. So he suddenly- Right, he introduced himself as Wolf and Geigen or something? Reveals his actual name as Yosuke, making the elf flustered. Oh, she's so cute. Oh my god, stop it, you're killing me. He asks her for her name, but it turns out to be super long and impossible to remember. Damn. Yosuke decides to give her a nickname, calling her Sui. The elf thinks it's disrespectful, and her people would never allow it. But Yosuke wonders if she likes it personally, explaining that Sui means green, just like the color of her eyes, calling them ah. beautiful like jewels. Dude, man rizzes out of his mind. Man freaking rizzing his ass off the entire time. He's like a riz god out here. She becomes flustered, and when he calls her Sui, she tells him to only- What? What is, th what is this angle? What is this oh, angle? Private. Too bad she promises idiot. to keep his name secret, because she wants to be the only one that uses it. Aww. Mabel joins them. And she wonders what they were doing. What is this? What is happening? She's the pet? That doesn't make sense. Don't you just say it like that. Yosuke mentions that he is there to explore the ruins. And Mabel recognizes it as one of the three shrines of the land. Oh, yes. In Mabel's song, the trial of the shrines is meant for a foreign warrior. They suddenly realizes that it would apply to Yosuke. Oh, my God. Yosuke true. approaches the shrine and he suddenly blows it up. A <laughs> sure. godly being emerges. And Yosuke prepares to go all out against Bro, it. He looks so cool sometimes. Like, look at this scene. It's like, God damn, this man's a hero. He's a legend. But Takafumi interrupts, and they wonder why he destroyed the shrine. He says that he was brought to the world by a great power, so he thought that by defeating the power of the shrine, he would get closer to returning back home. Fujimiya thinks that there should have been three shrines, but it turns out he already destroyed the other two in his previous adventures. <laughs> okay. The memory continues as he uses his full power to blast continuity, I guess. Blast the monster, but it instantly regenerates, and the elf notes that it's a mass of holy magic with no physical body, so regular attacks won't work. Monsters begin to rise from the ground. Oh god, the that's elf attacks horrible. with her sword, and Mabel uses her ice against the monsters. Let's go. But they keep on reviving. Dude, this is actually a crazy fight scene. They just put that in to this stupid comedy. Thing. Yosuke decides to burn them to ash, but as he approaches, he is suddenly mind controlled, and he unleashes his flames oh, against sucks. the two girls. The elf jumps to save Mabel, but they end up being protected by the god freezing sword. Makes they sense. wonder how they should fight Yosuke, 
but Raiga suddenly appears and sends Yosuke flying. Raiga thinks he took out an orc and a <laughs> No! No way! This this is the, the worst running gag in the history of comedy. Pro Fireclaw, thank you for the sub. He did that 30 times in this show! He had oh my god! Alicia starts healing the other two. They are there to find the singing monster, but the elf recognizes them, and Raga realizes it was Yosuke that he punched. Oh my god, every time! The elf tells them they are up against a godly being, and that Yosuke is being mind controlled. Alicia uses the power of her wand to bring Yosuke back to his senses. She finds herself in Yosuke's memory, but gets rejected, describing his childhood Yo, child even his memory get rejected. as dark and lonely, with nothing but a box in front of him. He just like, be for real. They all feel sorry for him, but those were his happiest memories. Oh, <laughs> oh no! No! Yosuke regains control, using his magic to slap himself, waking himself up. That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Man just got walloped in the face, he and he had to use his magic to slap himself. Throws up the flame of the blaze dragon, destroying the. Dude, everything comes full circle. I feel like not a single piece of this actual show was wasted. All the cringe backstories really came together. That's insane. Container, and the dragon begins to revive and absorb the holy monster's power. Since Yosuke couldn't fight something without a physical body. He planned for the dragon to absorb the monster, which he would then defeat. But Alicia wonders how he will defeat it, now that the dragon has gained the regeneration. And no, take the ice sword from the lady finally! And mind control powers. There's no way they're gonna go full circle to get that ice sword. Of the holy monster. Yosuke didn't think that far, and realizes that he may have made a mistake. Oops. Yosuke suggests using Mabel's god freezing sword, but Mabel is completely terrified. Oh, <laughs> Never mind. So it's not going to work. They think they are doomed, but the elf has a plan. She says that they just need to do more damage than it can heal, and makes mentions sense, that her sense. sword has the ability to absorb and amplify energy. If Yosuke provides his energy, they should have enough to defeat the dragon. Let's go. Alicia worries about the mind controlling, but the elf reveals the jewel on her forehead True. protects her from any yes, mental of attacks. Course. Yes, of course Alicia approaches Yosuke. I love the strat of just hit it harder. And they talk about their last encounter at the hot spring. Yosuke wants to know about the memory that he erased, but Alicia is too embarrassed to tell him. Oh the God. dragon starts to move, so the elf awkwardly asks Yosuke to carry her to help her fly. Bro, she's so cute though. There's no way they made her so cute. How did they do this? How, bro, did they do this? Why? Yosuke is Ain't not too no keen, way. so he ends up using his chain to carry her. Oh my God, dude, this guy. How is he like this? How is he like this? It hurts me inside, literally. With this, Mabel thinks she won't be needed for the fight. But as she tries to leave, the dragon appears to be targeting her because the Blaze Dragon has a natural grudge against the Ice Clan. Makes sense. Yosuke's Makes sense. racism. I guess you needed a little racism in this isekai. I was watching this whole isekai. I was like, wait a second. There's no racism. Oh, there it is, guys. Racism jump scare. Suggests that she can be the bait to distract the dragon. <laughs> oh, good. And she has no choice but to agree. As she charges at the dragon, it throws a boulder at her. But and Alicia she dies. saves her using one of Edgar's sword skills. Never mind. As the others distract the dragon, Yosuke can tell that the elf is worried, but she remembers his words from the past about never giving up, Aww. so they prepare to face the dragon. Takafumi pauses the memory, Dragging these nuts on your face! As he is in tears that he will finally get to witness a true fantasy battle, something he has been waiting to see since meeting his uncle. Yosuke makes some coffee, and Takafumi prepares some snacks. Bro, they're all to finally see a Oh my god, they're not gonna blue ball us, right? There's no way they're gonna blue ball us and they'll just beat him in four seconds. Now, Please. The memory continues as they approach the dragon. It blasts them with its breath, but Yosuke shields them from the attack. He transfers his magic to the elf, and she charges at the dragon. Dude, this is actually like such a wholesome final battle. And Mabel provides support using her eyes to bind the dragon and Yosuke unleashes his lightning to charge up the elf's sword. She okay. creates an enormous blade of energy, slashing down onto the dragon and defeating it. The elf- That was actually gorgeous! The animation, all the characters came to it, it's like, you could cry, it's like a beautiful finale! This is insane, this show is actually crazy! It's insane that it has these high-stakes battles as just goofy memories. ...and starts to fall, 
but Yosuke rushes to her and catches her. Very she awesome. tries to confess her feelings to him, but he can't hear her. <laughs> Over the wind! I love you, Yosuke! What? What? He carries her as they descend, but he smells a burnt smell on her and starts to sniff her, causing her to weird. struggle, and they end up crashing down. Yosuke collects the flame of the Holy Blaze Dragon, and the elf warns him about keeping it. The others come rushing over, and Mabel asks to be praised for her efforts. Yosuke th Slapper. thanks them all for their help, saying he would have struggled without them. He especially praises Aww. Mabel, and it seems she wants to be carried, just like how he carried the elf. Oh my god, dude, they are such simps. They are such fucking simps, every single one of them. She praises Mabel, and it seems she wants to be carried, just like how he carried the elf. Yosuke thinks god they just want to fly, so he grabs Alicia and jumps up carry the elf. There we go. There we go. I have way too many thumbnail options for this video. I don't even know what I'm going to do. Yosuke thinks they just want to fly, so he grabs Alicia and jumps up into the sky. She flails around, and when they land, Raiga and Edgar also want to turn. <laughs> oh no, god damn. The elf appears to be furious <laughs> at <laughs> And he just goes up and he flies with all of them. Mabel, but Yosuke thanks her for singing to him, giving her another ring. The elf is about to <laughs> Oh my god! He pays people in rings! Lose it. But Alicia suddenly wonders why Mabel calls him Wolfkinblood when, <laughs> when she thinks his name is Kuroki. Yosuke explains that he just made them up, but tells them his real name is Yosuke. The elf is- the, Dude, he did everything in his power to make her feel as not special as possible. Bro, she's about to go genocide mode. Literally, why would he do this? He's devastated. He, he carries her, so he decides to carry everyone else. He gives her a ring, so he gives rings to everybody else. He tells her his name, so he goes to tell his real name to everyone else. Literally, you have, you mean nothing to me. This man looked at this woman and he was like, you mean nothing to me. He gave out his real name so easily, and the other two find his fake names to be cooler which makes him happy. True, true. From now on, I also only want to be known as Wolfkin Blood. The elf gets mad at Yosuke, causing him to drop the dragon's flame. No! She wonders what he plans on doing with it, and he reveals that when they slayed the dragon, there was a warp in the space-time. He plans to combine the flame with other entities, in hopes that it will create a big enough portal for him to get home, but the elf suddenly tries to destroy it. She powers up her sword. Bro, why does he want to go home so badly? Sword, and there is a struggle, but Fujimiya can tell that she just didn't want him to leave. She wonders if he ended up making the flame stronger to create the portal home, but Takafumi stops her, not wanting to- No spoilers! To ruin the story. No spoilers! They start getting hungry, so Yosuke decides to treat them to ramen again. They enjoy a delicious meal, and as they walk home, Takafumi thinks about how much his life has changed in just a year. But that's where this video ends. And that's where the whole season one of uh, Uncle Isekai ends. Bro, that was a wild ride. This was insane. <laughs> Honestly, good anime. Great shit. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.